So when we look at these life tables, we can start to make some graphs about the information and the reproductive um, success and strategies that we see. So something called survivorship curves. And in survivorship curves, it's a method of using a graph to represent the data in the life table. So here we're going to take these life tables and show it in a graph. So here we have our graph. We're going to have the number of survivors on the Y and the percentage of maximum lifetime on the X. So when we see this, you can see a line that kind of forms like this. This is telling you that the number of births, if I have a thousand individuals born, the majority of them are going to live a long time. You see down here the percentage of maximum lifetime. So if you live 100% of your potential, so if our like life expectancy in America is 80 years old, um, you can see here a few, like if that was like 100% how much of your population, wow, a lot of people make it to 80. A lot of people make it that, that far. Um, <clears throat> some people might die a few years before 80 is what this part of the graph is showing us. So when we look at this red line, this is telling us, wow, out of a thousand babies born, a lot of them survive until adulthood and then die later off, um, later on in life. So right here, this part of the graph would have a high per capita death rate. You have the purple line, which is the opposite. This, you see a high death rate in the beginning. And then once they reach a certain age, they have a high chance of survival. So when we look at these species, oh, and then the green line is showing us, you know what, you have an equal chance of death at any age of your life. So this would be like rodents or in, in like uh, insects. They have an equal chance of dying when they're first born versus when they're old or middle age. So when you look at the different types of life tables and how you represent it in a graph, um, you would see here this purple line might have a lot of born but few live to very old age. Whereas in the red one, you might have, oh, so like sea turtles is the example I used earlier. So you have like sea turtles, a whole bunch are born, but very few actually survive until adulthood. On the red line, this would be like humans. We take care of our young, so we have a few offspring with the hopes that they survive um, until old age. And then realistically though, when we look at these life tables, they're not all cut and dry as one, two, and three. When we were, if we were to assign values to these, this right here, uh, the purple line, is actually a survivorship curve, um, like a type one survivorship curve. The green line is a type two survivorship curve. And the purple line is a type three survivorship curve. But realistically, there's a lot of different kinds of survivorship curves depending on the species. Um, okay. Oh, we can keep going. So there's trade-offs with life histories. Animals have evolved different strategies for success um, between survival and reproduction. So there's different things that species uh, take into consideration uh, depending on if they're going to be a type 1, type 2, or type 3 survivorship curve. How often do they reproduce, the number of offspring they have, and the investment in paternal care. So traits that affect an organism's schedule of reproduction and survival make up its life history. So the different parts to a life history are when does reproductive age begin, how often do they reproduce, and how many offspring each time. So really this can be summarized into two different groups. We have a species called R selected species, are strategists, and we have K-selected species. And when you look at these animals, you can see the R species, these ones are, have like a whole bunch of babies with the hopes that a few survive. So here, like oysters, they have 500 million per year with the hopes that a few of them survive. Whereas you look at like uh, frogs, about 200 per year. Chances are if they lay all those eggs, a few of them will make it to adulthood. Whereas like gorillas, or K-selected species, they have few offspring with high parental involvement. With all those parents caring for these offspring, it ensures their survival. So if I were to look at one of those survivorship curves with the graphs, the oysters would be the type three, like this, an R-selected species. Whereas the gorillas would be a type K. 
a K-selected species. So when we look at this, an R-selected species are those that place an emphasis on high growth rate. Remember from population growth, the little r? And typically exploit less crowded niches and produce many offspring. But there's a low probability of surviving to adulthood. And then you have your K-selected species, which have very stable populations and tend to have low numbers of offspring. Um, however, individual offspring tend to be quite large in comparison with our selected species. So if I looked at these two plants, you can see that our selected species is the dandelion. They invest a lot of their energy and resources into a lot of seeds, with the hopes that some land in good places and will grow into new plants. Whereas with a K-selected plant, you have the acorns. That's a lot of photosynthesis went into building that one acorn. So they have parental investment in the hopes that it actually survives and grows into a tree. So if we look at like K-selected species and R-selected species, R-selected species a lot of times are going to have rapid growth and hopefully they live to adulthood. Whereas K-selected species you'll find in more stable um, ecosystems kind of near carrying capacity. So if I look back at this survivorship curve, I can see the case selection type species, they have low numbers of offspring because they're going to try and care for them so they survive to adulthood. So their, their trade-offs, <coughs> they've evolved to put a lot of parental investment and care into their offspring and that's their strategy for survival. When you look at our selection, their strategy for survival is to put a lot of energy and resources into making a thousands, lots and lots of offspring, and then z like little to no parental care with the hopes that, eh, I hope some grow up to adulthood. I did make a thousand seeds, so let's hope two or three actually land in a suitable environment. Oops. In order for reproduction. So survivorship curves can be read with K-selected species and R-selected species.